Hi Curlies! I hope it's not too late in the year of 2016 to tell you Happy New Year! <laughs> I'm back. Um, I was ill for a while, um, had a bad cold and I'm still um, fighting it. <laughs> but I am getting over it, so I am feeling very blessed. I hope that your New Year started off right. Already my glasses are fogging. It's probably the lighting. Um, the reason I wanted to come to you today is to talk to you about Shea Moisture products and mixing and matching of products. Um, it's a habit. I do it. Just about all of my girlfriends do it. But what I wanted to say is I've been on the quest for the perfect wash and go and I should know by now, I should know by now that there is no perfect wash and go. There is no perfect curl. There is no perfect twist out. There is no perfect hairstyle regardless because no matter what you use and how you plan for it, there's always going to be something that goes wrong. You just got to roll with it, smile, and just keep it going. So, the thing I found out, because I'm rocking a wash and go, that's my favorite hairstyle, um, and there's a mirror in front of me too in case if you're wondering. One of my staple products from the very beginning has always been the Shea Moisture line. And it was the coconut and hibiscus line. So finally I had the opportunity because, you know, recently they had the buy one get one free at Walgreens. Um, the Raw, the Shea Moisture Raw Shea Butter Restorative Conditioner, the Shea Moisture Raw Shea Butter Moisture Retention Shampoo, I used these two, this shampoo, and this conditioner I used as a leave-in. Now it doesn't say to do that, but I did. Um, and I also used um, the, I have the, I don't have it on the table with me, but the Raw Shea Butter Deep, Contr uh, Deep Treatment Mask. I used that on my hair for 30 minutes. So I washed first with the shampoo, then I did the mask, and then I did this conditioner as a leave-in. On top of that, I put the Raw Shea Butter Extra Moisture Transitioning Milk. This has sea kelp and argan oil in it, and it's for dry, damaged hair. It's to heal, strengthen, and grow. These products together were the bomb.com. Um, it put a little bit more moisture into my hair, so I was happy to have that because that's what I've been missing. Um, I love wearing my hair with this middle part. I just wish I had a little bit more length, but we're going to get there by June. Yes, that is my goal to get just um, probably about another two inches and I'm good to go. But on each side, like two inches and I'm good because I like the shape in the back because it's like a heart when you see my hair from the back. Um, I also use the Coconut and Hibiscus Curling Gel Souffle. The Coconut and Hibiscus Curling Gel Souffle. Um, this has aguave nectar and flaxseed oil in it, and it's for thick curly hair, anti-frizz, moisture, and shine. So, as you can see, this one is, um, yeah. But the good thing is, during the Walgreens BOGO, I did pick up another one of these. So, this has always remained a staple for me. Um, I've always used the coconut and hibiscus line, but I've never even used the coconut and hibiscus conditioner nor the shampoo. But because I was suffering from a little bit of dryness, that's what made me, you know, I became interested in uh, the raw shea butter line by Shea Moisture, the shampoo and the conditioner, because it's supposed to heal, grow, and strengthen. And I, I love this line. I, I love. I love it. And I love the results of my um, wash and go with it. The curls are not the curls I thought they would be. They're more wavy and I can deal with that. Um, it might look dry, but my hair is really not dry because if I do like this and show you my fingers, look. So, and that moisture comes from this because I did use the, um, the, raw, the raw Shea Moisture um, extra moisture transitioning milk. I did put that on my hair as well. Um, I think before I go to bed, I may do a little bit more on the hair. Um, I'm back to doing a rinse. I'm not gonna do the demi-permanent anymore. I'm back to using my 
semi-permanent color by the Beautiful Collection. Um, I, I strayed off the path, the beaten path, and was using another color by uh, Ion, and it just, I think that dried my hair out a little bit, the demi-permanent, because I got the little stiffness going on there in the front. But I don't mind because I love the way the hair looks. I love that it's moisturized, you know. I could gel it down if I wanted to or do a headband. So I always like the shape of this and the fact that my hair is in a heart in the back. I just need a little bit more length. But that's all I wanted to come on and talk about is when you guys use a brand, um, a certain brand, do you use everything by that brand or do you tend to mix and match? Because if you're like me, that's what I was doing. I was mixing and matching and then I get upset when I don't get the results that it promises. But at the same time, some of these products are not meant to be mixed and match. Maybe As I Am is not meant to go with Shea Moisture products. Maybe Shea Moisture products are not meant to, to, to go, you know, with Carol's Daughter or Jane Carter's, you know. And that's another pro those products are products I like too, but I think the reason in the past they didn't work is because I mixed and matched. So my question to you, if you will comment below and kind of help me out, let me know do you mix and match? And I have made it to over 200 subscribers. I am just over the moon because I'm not all into numbers. As long as I know I'm reaching someone and helping someone and that someone is helping me by commenting and letting me know like, hey girlfriend, this is what works for me or hey girlfriend, why don't you, why don't you try this? Then I know I'm getting somewhere. So that is the question of the day. Do you mix and match brands? And if you do, do you get the results you hope for or you get the results you just, ugh, just hate? So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.